Good afternoon, New York. Good evening from Ahmedabad in India. It is an honor to be speaking at the New York Textile Month this year. My name is Ritu Jadwani, and on behalf of my initiative, Namaste NYC, I look forward to share about Ajrak block printing traditions in Gujarat region, Western India. Firstly, I would like to thank Lee Adelcourt, Ragna Froda, and the team at New York Textile Month and Parsons School of Design for giving me this opportunity. Thank you to the attendees who are tuning in from around the world and participating in this workshop. I really appreciate your time. I had a chance to visit New York Textile Month last year in person, and I'm glad to be presenting this year virtually. COVID-19 has been a blessing in disguise, I must say, for helping bringing us together from around the world through the power of technology and for the love of crafts and textiles. So without wasting much time, let's begin and take a look on what we have today. On the agenda, we have about 10 to 15 minutes talk about the Ajarak process, followed by a quick short demonstration for printing. After this, Attendees are encouraged to print and create their piece of art. We will have some time for question and answers after the session and for attendees to share their artwork. Origin of Ajrak, Sindh, Pakistan. The art of Ajrak block printing originated in the Sindh region of present day Pakistan and Northern India. These regions have been epicenter of the Indus Valley civilization, which spanned from 2600 BC to 1750 BC along the Indus River. Ajrak was a local art which used the local skills and crafts to fulfill the uh, needs of people by creating handbrock printed textiles. After the partition of India and Pakistan, some printers moved to the Kutch region in Gujarat state, Western India. This village was on the banks of river Dhamarka, where the crafts flourished for about 300 years. The printing requires ample amount of water for dyeing, washing, and the processes. So the printers moved to the village of Ajrakpur, which had plenty of water available after setting up in Dhamarka. The current family of printers is the 15th generation of Khatri community who migrated to India from Sindh region in Pakistan. At Namaste NYC, we work with these artisans who create our handblock printed textiles. Here you can see how two artisans are hand drying the printed textiles. The art of Ajrak block printing. Ajrak in Hindi literally translates to keep it today or let it be. Aj means today and rak means let it be. Ajrak is also synonymous with blue sky. Ajrak patterns are related to the celestial objects and often inspired by stars and constellations. Milky Way and Galaxy are various patterns seen in Ajrak prints. The popular colors used are indigo, red, turmeric, olive green, and black. It's a long process, it takes about seven to 10 days. The printing steps of Ajrak have about 10 steps that are from start to end, that is from the gray fabric to the printed fabric. The fabric is printed, uh, soaked in water, followed by washing in water, followed by dyeing in sunlight, uh, drying in sunlight, dyeing again, and then setting it on the table. First, the outline of the design is printed using a wood block with white color. On the front side of the fabric, the printing is first done, followed by the back side. The beauty of Ajrak is the fabric has prints on both the sides and the back side of the fabric is equally gorgeous. You will see some examples as we explore further. After the white outline border print has been done, the, the colors move on to blue, indigo, turmeric and olive green and so on. After every print, the fabric is washed, dried, rinsed, soaked, and dried again. 
which is what makes the process even more cumbersome and time taking. Here you can see one of our skilled artisans uh, creating the indigo path. How beautiful these colors look in natural sunlight. Ajrak uses all natural colors for the printing process. The white comes from a mixture of gum arabic and lime. The red is extracted from a mixture of alum, tamarind seed powder and clay. For black, iron and jaggery are let be, that means ajrak, let them be for 10 to 15 days in water. And that's how the black is derived. Indigo comes from indigo plant and lime ferment mixture. Again, our master artisan, Sukhyan Thai, who's working on the indigo path in the villages of Kutch. In India, there's a practice of calling our uh, male artisans as Bhai, which literally translates into brother. And the female artisans are called Ben, which translates into sisters. Eventually, we all work together as a family to create all these handlock printed beautiful textiles. Each community member is like a family member for us. All Ajrak textiles are naturally dyed in sunlight. This helps reduce the amount of energy used during the printing process. Moreover, due to the large amount of hand labor required during this process, it helps generate employment opportunities for the local people in the villages. Although there are some qualms of the younger generation not very inquisitive to join the, the uh, heritage block printing traditions that started by their ancestors. Thus, it's important for designers, brands, researchers to work with these crafts and contribute towards their sustenance. Let's take a look at the wood block printing process. Wood and metal blocks are made in the villages of Gujarat and transported to the villages for Ajrak, Dabu and Bagru textiles. Dabu and Bagru textiles are regional to the region of Rajasthan in Gujarat. The designs are first sketched on tracing paper and then they are drawn, transferred to wooden blocks, as you can see in the second image. The block makers intricately carve the wood into uh, the sketched designs to achieve the final carved block. Blocks can be made in sets or by themselves as a single block. Here you can see a set of three blocks in the Paisley design. One is the outline. Second is the border and third is the fill. Blocks can be from two to six color print blocks as a set. We will explore some prints further. On the left, you can also see the basic tools that are used by our artisans to craft the blocks. Here is a glimpse into the house of our block maker. Unfortunately, there are very few families left in the region of Gujarat, about 10 to 12 families who continue the tradition of block printing till date. It is a very time consuming process and requires a lot of practice and patience. Let's look at some traditional Ajrak designs now. Indigo medallion. As you can see, uh, on the right side of the screen, you can see the back side of the fabric. It looks equally beautiful. This is a print that is traditional and ancient to the history of Ajrak and has been running since many, many years, and it still is a classic. The beauty of Ajrak is it becomes softer with every wash and the colors start to glow up better because they have been soaked, washed, rinsed again and again as you start using the textiles. Here is a booty print. In Hindi, we call it booty which translates into flowers or chins. Trikon lehria. Trikon translating into triangle and lehria translating into waves. Notice the brush effect on the background of this fabric. This has been printed on softest possible voil, cotton voil fabric. The softer the fabric, the more difficult the printing process. Reason B, it takes more time to pin the fabric before printing and thus the artisan has to be extremely careful while printing these blocks. 
Here is a contemporary print, which we call it the double scallop in red and turmeric. Red medallion. We love to contemporize our traditional prints. Here you can see a contemporary version of our medallion print. To the reverse, the resist print has been used to create solid blocks of circles and the traditional medallion prints. Indigo floral, a, cl a classic timeless floral design, which we locally call as the Jai. Dots or tapka, as they call it in Hindi and Gujarati, the local regional language. Notice how beautiful the reverse side of the fabric looks. On the bottom left corner where you see accents of red is the back side of the fabric. The fabric has not only been printed with ajrak, but also treated with some light brush strokes to give a textured effect. Here is a, a modern contemporary print again. I call it the hexagon mystery because it's cur curvy and it's also organic and geometric uh, in red and indigo blue. Red black scallop, again a contemporary print. These yardages are all printed on 42 to 44 inch width textiles which are useful for making apparel. A classic geometric double diamond. Notice the contrast and the complementary colors on the prints. Red wave. In indigo, red, black and soft turmeric. About Namaste NYC. Namaste NYC is a fair trade ethnic brand that helps sustain crafts and textiles of India. We work with women in the villages, support skilled artisans and disabled women to create handcrafted one-of-a-kind products. We launched in New York in 2013. At Namaste, we train women in sewing and hand embroidery and they help us create beautiful handcrafted products. We work in networks. Each network has a leader who communicates with our studio for pickup and drop off of fabrics and raw materials. We work on the concept of homework kits. This way, the women do not need to come to our studio every day. The leader collects the homework kits, which consists of fabric, raw material, beads, yarn, thread, etc., other products, and takes it home and distributes among these women. The women finish the task assigned, finish the embroidery, and bring it back to us. This way, the women can work from home and still continue to take care of their responsibilities and kids and be financially independent, which is the most important part at our company. Inclusivity is a very important part of our brand ethos, whether it is at the customer end or at the vendor end. Working with artisans that belong to various castes and cultures in India. Short here are our free size kaftans and tunics, which are hand dyed. And the kaftans are hand block printed with a waist uh, tie up and tassel detail. At Namaste, we often craft clothing with free size. So one size fits all. This, these are images from our resort wear collection for cover ups. So on your left is a indigo scallop and olive print. And on the right is a red, red and blue scallop print. On the left is our hexagon print um, kaftan, and on the right is our scallop print cotton wool uh, sleeveless cowl neck tunic. We are a wholesale company and we supply to stores, museums, boutiques, and uh, this is a range of the products that we offer. So let's look at what I've been doing while I was in quarantine uh, when I was in the United States. I had some blocks with me and thus I started printing. Seen here are the classic medallion and chevron or the arrow blocks. Paisley, a pattern that is deep rooted to the craft cultures of India. Any craft you pick, whether it's embroidery, printing or texture or batik, paisley is a classic motif that runs in all crafts of India. Paisley with medallion. Again, the arrow block and playing around and creating a check design. 
You do not necessarily have to have blocks if you want to start printing. You can use any found objects to create these marks. Here I've used some lids, jars and Goya bottles uh, to be able to create these circles. And today I will show you how you can create marks but, uh, to imitate the patterns of the blocks that you have or simply use blocks. Make sure to experiment. Here I have used uh, the back side of the lipstick, uh, a paintbrush, and a turmeric dye to create this pattern. Play with circles. So just using the basic concept of circle and playing around with the uh, size and the dimension, I've tried to experiment with some basic everyday found objects. Okay, so um, that was the talk part. Um, let's get on to the demonstration. And uh, I will stop sharing my screen now so that you can see what I have on my print table. Uh, if you are printing with me today, I would recommend you to have a plate or a tray, um, have a, a paste or colors. It could be a soy sauce, it could be a tamarind paste, turmeric paste, um, um, anything, any uh, colorful paste that you can find in your kitchen. If you have blocks, wonderful. If you don't, don't worry. Look for some local objects in your kitchen or in your wardrobe to create marks. So, um, welcome to our studio in uh, Western India. We are based in Gujarat. And um, on behind me, you will see some um, Ajrak hand block printed scarves, which have been hand block printed with artisans in the villages. Uh, all these scarves are adorned with tassels that are made by women. Let me take you to my printing table now. So that's my printing table. And I hope you can get a nice glimpse of it. So I have a nice clean white surface. I'm going to move my cell phone outside. I have a nice clean surface. And let me show you what I have before we start printing. Sheets. Fabric. I have a plate where I've created a um, red color. I'm going to just add some water on this. If you're using paints while doing this art exercise or art workshop, feel free to use any. It could be watercolor, oil pastels, um, oil colors, or uh, poster colors. I also have some tamarind paste with me. Here you can see I have two types of pastes. And I have some okra, which I'm going to use to create some wonderful prints today. So I've cut out okra. I have short glasses to create my circles a cup, a jar, and I have some beautiful blocks. So, in India, we start all our projects with, by taking the name of Lord Ganesha. So here I have a Lord Ganesha block, which you can see is hand carved. And my first pattern is going to be with Lord Ganesha. He's also known as the Elephant God. There you are. That's a beautiful Lord Ganesha print to initiate and uh, start a workshop. I also have a traditional small elephant design, which I'm going to use to make another border or a surrounding Lord Ganesha. Beautiful. 
Wonderful. So those were some traditional design blocks that I used to show you the demonstration. Let's look at some modern blocks that I have here. Here is a concentric circle block, which is a border. It has three sizes and I'm going to show you how we're going to replicate this design using household objects. Let me show you my other blocks of collection. A checks block, which is made up of squares, a very modern design. And like I said, paisleys, very traditional to any patterns in India. Here I have a beautiful paisley, which also has a carving of flowers inside. So I call it the floral paisley and some borders. A classic floral can never go out of style. Here I have a floral block. And one of my favorites, which has, it's a big block. So this has a carving of a peacock and an elephant with some uh, leaves and uh, flora and fauna around it. So this one is a big block and it has a big handle in the back, which helps you which helps the artisan to be able to print. And of course, the um, classic triangle geometric print, which is often used by a lot of designers. Um, I also have on my tray table, a few smaller blocks and ink, which I'm going to be using to print. So here is my tray. If you are printing at home, I would recommend you to use a tray. You can layer it with a layer of uh, a fabric, it could be jute, it could be cotton. This simply helps the dye to uh, be soaked properly by the blocks so that you don't get lumps when you're dipping the fabric on the uh, tray. So um, here is our contemporary block, which I'm going to replicate using household objects. I have my short glasses, so let's use the back of this. There you are, I have the circles. And I'm gonna use my lid jars to create the outside concentric circles. I'm going to add a little bit of variation here so that our circles are above. And just to add some fun, I'm going to use this little tiny okra. To print the centers on this design. So um, there you are. This is my interpretation of a modern or a contemporary block created by objects found in the household. Now over to you to try some of the objects that you have found in your household and create some new patterns. We do have time for some question, question and answer and um, sharing of your artwork if you have uh, created something during this workshop. You can uh, ask your questions by hitting the question and answer tab on the bottom of the screen. So um, I would suggest to use this time to create your art piece and um, come back 
or uh, um, share what you have. So we finished with the demonstration. I hope you are printing right now and creating a beautiful piece of art. It would be wonderful if you can share this uh, on your Instagram channel, on your Instagram page and um, tag us, tag New York uh, Textile Month and tag Dapaste NYC so we can reshare it on our uh, Instagram pages. So uh, I have a question on how to make the color last longer on fabric. Uh, the process of ajrak uh, after the color have been printed, uh, the fabric is finished um, with the particles which uh, bind the color on the fabric. So that is done in the villages by the artisans. If you want to uh, keep the uh, color last longer on the fabric, uh, for home dyeing or for home printing, I would suggest you to iron the back side of your fabric uh, after you have finished printing and um, hand wash the fabric. Do not uh, wash it in machine. You will have to use uh, a fixture or a modern uh, to be able to keep the fabric if you're doing this technically. I have another question. Uh, hello, Julie. Uh, thank you for joining in. At about what time do you consider designs motives uh, modern as opposed to traditional? Um, so I would say the traditional designs um, are the ones which have been uh, practiced since many, many years and have not changed. Uh, these were inspired by local life or celestial objects. Uh, when we talk specifically about Ajrak, uh, Contemporary or modern motives are uh, designers' interpretation of the craft when they work in collaboration with the artisans. So um, to me, a circle is a very traditional design because um, um, in India, there, there's a culture of wearing a bindi, a, a tikka on your forehead. And you see um, so many variations of the circle in your daily life. So it's a traditional motif, but when a designer gives it a new twist, uh, I think it becomes uh, contemporary for a modern market. Uh, hi, Carol. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing in. Uh, that is very interesting. Can you tell me what the um, dye plant jaggery is? So jaggery is uh, used as a mixture. Um, it's not uh, the plant. What kind of, uh, hi Julie again, what kind of woods are used to make the blocks? Um, so uh, the artisans use uh, teak wood or shisham wood, which is um, available in the uh, sourced from the forest or from the local markets uh, to make the blocks. Uh, the block making process is also very tedious. So uh, once the wood is sourced, it's um, dipped into oil and let it be for two, three days till a lot of oil has been soaked in the uh, by the wood. And after that, the carving uh, process starts. I hope that answered your questions. Um. 
and i have someone commenting uh, thank you so much great activity for kids yes that's true it's a great activity for kids if you have um, if they are home i'm sure they are home right now uh, during this quarantine period um, you can use vegetables in your house you can use um, you can uh, carve patterns and designs on potatoes or uh, just use found objects uh, to create uh, fun prints and patterns if you liked this workshop and if you enjoyed uh, printing and listening to the talk um, i would encourage you to uh, look at uh, my etsy page and uh, uh, for this new york textile month event we've requested a donation of 10 dollars for the event if you liked and enjoyed please feel free to visit um, my website uh, it's uh, namaste-nyc.com and that will give you a link to my etsy shop uh, you can purchase blocks and fabrics there and um, yeah i have another question which is asking me uh, do you clean the wood blocks after each project or periodically yes uh, we clean the wood blocks after every printing process uh, the blocks are cleaned using um, soap water and brush so uh, you want to make sure that um, let me see so if you have blocks, you want to make sure that there is no um, paint or dye stuck in between because that's going to hinder in your next printing process. So the blocks are cleaned after every print process with um, soapy water and a brush. And uh, the blocks are stored um, in our shelves. Um, they last about two to five years, depending on how often we use them. So the more better you clean them, the more they will last. And of course, if you're printing a lot, that means um, they will last less. But if you're printing very uh, little from the blocks, then uh, the life will be longer. So I have, I've had this uh, Ganesh block for almost about 10 years now. And um, I just clean it with soap water after every print and um, it's doing fine now. I'm going to let our uh, master block printer, the beautiful indigo on our screen. So I have another question. Uh, should we pre-treat the fabric with something before each printing? Yes, uh, if you're printing, um, technically uh, it's important to pre-treat the fabric. We normally wash it in soapy water. Uh, the gray fabric is washed um, and then treated um, uh, with soap as well. And then dried in sunlight. So this helps remove all the starch uh, which is on the fabric. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's washed clean before uh, printing.
So um, I'm happy to answer any more questions if anybody has. And um, it will be wonderful. Um, I hope you're printing now and creating your beautiful artwork uh, using um, dyes or colors that you have um, available in your house or in your studio or uh, where you are based. It will be wonderful if you can share the artwork created. Um, you can email them to us. You can post them on Instagram and tag us. So we have another question. Are most Ajra printed with one design on one side and a different design on the other? Uh, most Ajraks are printed with the same design on both the sides, which is what makes the fabric reversible. So let me um, let me pull out a scarf so it can you can see it better probably. Uh, no, they are not printed with different designs. They are printed with the same designs. So that's why you see the same print on the back side of the fabric. Although um, I think it would be very interesting to have this small experiment of printing uh, two different designs on both the sides and see how it looks. Um, that's a very interesting idea. Um, thank you, Julie, for asking this question. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. So we have someone asking me about how is indigo extracted from the plant. So um, indigo is extracted with a very uh, tedious process from the plant by our skilled artisans in the villages. It's a long process. But um, nowadays, we are seeing um, that synthetic indigo has penetrated the market um, a lot in the printing industry. Uh, so it's a long, tedious process and for which indigo needs to be cultivated near the printing site. So it's uh, grown and uh, extracted from the plant uh, by our printers in the villages.
Um, hi, Omi. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, you're welcome. I'm, uh, I'm glad. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, your question is, will you be able to view this again? Uh, yes, this is going to be available online on the New York Textile Month um, after a few hours or a day or so, hopefully. So keep checking the New York Textile Month um, website and uh, you should be able to view this again. So we have another question uh, from Julie. Um, are there any local efforts being made to train new block printers to carry on these traditions? Yes. Um, so in Gujarat, we are seeing a rise in um, schools that train artisans, or I would say uh, the next generation of artisans uh, to continue and work towards the local crafts and preserve the heritage. So there are a lot of um, local schools which are training these artisans and uh, exposing them to newer, better markets by giving them exposure, by taking them to exhibitions, by uh, imparting uh, design education, uh, so that they understand the value of the craft. Moreover, uh, nowadays there are a lot of tie-ups between the local design schools. Uh, we have NIFT Gandhi Nagari or NID, um, SEPT, uh, which are design and architecture schools who often have craft cluster projects with artisans in the villages um, to train the uh, artisans in modern design um, thinking processes. So there are um, a lot of local efforts which are being made to train new printers to carry on these traditions. Um, there are a lot of designers in India who work with these crafts and artisans um, to uh, do projects and create new designs so that the artisans continue to keep getting work and uh, their workshop keeps busy um, and the designer has a new uh, product for the market. So uh, there are a lot of local efforts that are being made uh, to train new block printers to carry on these traditions. Thank you for asking that question, wonderful question. If you're posting your art on Instagram um, or, or on a social media or emailing it to us, please make sure to um, send it to us. Uh, tag New York Textile Months. It will be wonderful to see what you've created um, today uh, with us. And uh, please feel free to share your comments and feedback um, on our pages. There are various other uh, crafts which also use uh, these blocks that are created in the villages of Gujarat and Rajasthan. Um, there are crafts like um, wax tie dye resist print, which is popularly known as batik. Um, so batik also uses wood blocks. A um, lot of artisans are working um, with modern designs um, to support traditional crafts, which is another um, good thing that is or a local effort that is being taken uh, to sustain the crafts.
So um, let's see if I can uh, possibly um, help if someone is creating art and wants to show uh, what you've created. I can try and um, see if you can share your video. Please um, feel free to share your art through your videos. If you would like to um, share your art, you can let me know and I can um, possibly try and let you turn on your video. So we are almost um, towards the end of our uh, talk and workshop today. And um, if you have any questions or um, uh, comments, feel free to write them in the chat box.
Well, that does bring us to an end um, to our talk and workshop today. Um, thank you so much uh, for everyone to everyone who has joined us uh, today. I hope you enjoyed uh, creating a piece of art uh, while sitting at home. And uh, I hope you will share it with us uh, and tag New York Textiles Month. Um, again, I, I would like to thank uh, Lee, Ragna, and the team at um, New York Textile Month for uh, giving us this time um, to be able to create something uh, by using local objects from our kitchen and found objects. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, thanks for joining in today. Um, I hope you attend uh, all the other interesting events at the New York Textile Month. And um, take care and have a great weekend. Take care. Bye.